all set. I've waited that long for today. Now I'd do anything to put it off. You do know you can't take her into the court room with you. I don't want to. To hear all them lies they're going to be telling. Saying her mother's a murderer. Word is you're still going to plead not guilty. Is that right? They've told me not to. But I'm not going to go out there and lie. Saying I'm guilty when I'm not. So I come. To lock up, empty the till, like I do every night. Only what do I find? We'd closed. So would you like to tell me why? Well, we weren't doing any business, and I just fancied some time off. You fancied? Just like that, you fancied some time off? Well, yeah. And is this going to happen again? This is going to be a regular thing. Do you think the pair of you might fancy some time off today, for example? Yes, Norris. Oh, I, uh did attempt to make this uh, purchase last night. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have been able to because my staff, they fancied some time off. Do you think you could answer that now that you are here? 270, please. I uh, imagine uh, employing members of your own family doesn't... Yeah, 270, off. please, Hello. thank you. It's me. And how are you this morning? Well, there. And whose fault's that for spiking my drink? I was trying to cheer you up. More like trying to poison me. One minute. Why, Dad? Oh, yeah. Just come to see if there's any pose for me. Listen, I'm really tired, Dad, that I don't feel very well. I'm not going to be in today. You mean you're skiving? Yeah, who's skiving? Is that is that, that Sophie? No, I am not skiving. I feel awful. Will you just tell him, please? Thank you, Norris. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye to you, too. Kind of awful. What's the matter? Dad, I really don't want to talk about it. And Sophie's sick or something. I'm not just going to leave you while you're like this, am I? Tell the truth. And shame the devil. Pardon? Yes, I would tell the truth if I knew what it was. You keep telling me she's your friend and you know she's innocent. I do. Fizz wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, do you think that's enough? Fizz! Fizz, hello! We're here! Oh, oh I wonder if she saw us. They don't want to hear if she hurt flies or not. They want to hear, did she help murder anybody? Well, of course she didn't. That's what I have to say, is it? Yes. This is after I swore to tell the truth, or should I ask if you can skip that bit? Just tell the truth, which is that she's innocent. Okay. You're not going to be needed until tomorrow, and, and maybe not even then. Am I not? And you don't want to be hanging around there, do you? I might. How do you know? So, so, so why don't you stay here this morning and, and let me go with Mary? Sorry, no. They said I've got to be always available. Well, I must say, I think you've been rather selfish about all this. Selfish? That courtroom is not a circus, you know, or a freak show for folk to go and gawp at. It's a young woman who I personally happen to be very fond of, facing the most terrible charges that could ruin her entire life. And anyone who mistakes that for entertainment must be wrong in the head. I'll be upstairs if you need me. Well, that's telling us. So the prosecution, they'll put their case first, yes? Yeah. I'll be questioning their witnesses, but don't worry if it seems that they're making all the running. We'll get our turn once they're finished. And when do I have to get up there? Uh, well, not quite yet. You'll be called as a witness for the defence, which is when you'll get the chance to have your say. You know, at work, whenever we used to talk about some murder that had been in the papers... Yes. We always used to say his wife must have known. She must have. Because she's been there living with him, how can she not? And you're thinking they'll be saying that about you? They'll have said it already. Hi, babe. Right. You know how I said I was going to take pictures of the flat? Well, I have. Great. So I need you to take them to the estate agents and make sure that they use them so I haven't been wasting my time. Babe, I'm up to my neck in it. Why can't you do it? Because we're in this together, aren't we, Jason? Yeah. Well, I have done my share, so now it's your turn. And this is all because your man's been going on at you, right? And on and on and on. My whole family hate me. But, you know, I have had enough of living around here. I want to live somewhere like Cheshire, where people dress better and know how to behave. It's because you tried it on with Jeff. 
tried it on. Well, you know what I mean. And then it all went wrong, eh? I did not try it on with anybody, thank you very much. And I certainly won't be trying it on with you until you can apologise. Am I all right sitting here? Yes, of course. Uh, are you here for any particular reason, or are you, like me, a student of human nature? Oh, no, no. Chesney's a mate of mine. I'm fizzy, so I had to come. Well, then, I'm sorry to say it, but you should be prepared for the worst. Why? They're charging her with three murders. Oh, no. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, she might wriggle out of one, two even, but three? <laughs> I don't think so. Here, have a boiled sweet. All rise. Fiona, stay. Yeah, this way. To death. She has a prison pallor about her. It is never very flattering. I'm just off to the gents. Again? Are you all right? No, I'm not. No, I mean medically. Oh. Excuse me. Is this where the prosecution witnesses wait to be called? Oh, it's where we've been told to wait, yes. Are you here for the state case? My partner is. He's gone for a walk. Terrible, isn't it? I mean, to relive it all again. I'm sure it will be, yeah. He killed our daughter. Oh, no. Then he tied us up and he kept us prisoner in our own cellar. But still, I, I suppose we have to remember that it's not him. It's not John on trial, is it? Well, more's the pity. But they must know things, though, mustn't they? To be charging her like this. They must know things we don't. Members of the jury, Fiona State stands charged on this indictment, which contains three counts. On the first count, she is charged with the murder of Joy Elizabeth Fishwick on the 10th day of January 2011. On the second count, with the murder of Charlotte Hoyle on the 9th day of December 2010. And on the third count, with the murder of Colin Fishwick on the 30th day of July, 2010. It is your charge to say, having heard all the evidence, whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty of all or any of these counts. The case you're about to hear begins with two people, the defendant and her husband, John Stape, conspiring to steal the identity of another person, that of a man named Colin Fishwick, who had emigrated to Canada. Problems arose when he returned and discovered what they'd been up to. Their response was to murder him and to hide his body. However, a colleague of John Stape, Charlotte Hoyle, became aware of what was going on, and so she too had to be dealt with. So now, with the blood of two people on their hands. Were Mr. and Mrs. Stape safe at last? No. Because now Colin Fishwick's mother, anxious to discover the whereabouts of her son, turned up on their doorstep asking awkward questions. And so we had murder number three. Members of the jury, these were not crimes of passion, nor were they the result of anger or strong emotion. No. These were deliberate, cold-blooded executions carried out by two people 
man and wife, acting together, one of whom stands before you today. All right, for Quinn. Yeah, sure. Honey, I gather you're not feeling very well. And Dad uh, thinks I'm skiving. Is that why you're here? Has he sent you to check up on me? No, he hasn't. And I'm sorry you think I would, even if he asked me. I'm sorry, Sunita. I, d I didn't mean to say that. Well, let's pretend you didn't, shall we? What's up, Sophie? Is it Sean? Have you two fallen out? Um, we are going to, though. Oh, wait, why? If I tell what happened last night, we're definitely going to fall out. Do you want to tell me? I kissed just somebody else. And now you're probably going to want to know who that somebody else was. So I might as well tell you that or not. I kissed Amber. Mr. Packham, can I take you back to April of last year? What position did you then hold? Uh, I was head of English at um, Daisyfield High School, Rochdale. And it was around this time that you were making a new appointment to your department, were you not? We were, yes. What was his name? Well, I, I, I thought it was uh, Colin Fishwick. But it wasn't? Turned out it wasn't, no. What was it? John. John Stape. This is the husband of the defendant we're talking about? Yes. So why did he do this, call himself by a false name? Um, <clears throat> well, he had a criminal record, so he'd never got past a CRB check. Perhaps you could explain for the jury? Me? If you wouldn't mind. Well, uh, it's, uh, if you're working with children... It's a check to see whether the person you're employing has got any previous convictions, is it not? It is, yes. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. My pleasure, my lad. So, this stealing of another person's identity. Did you know whether his wife knew what he'd done? Well, she certainly knew we had a criminal record. They got married in prison. Not that they were both in. John. He was. They got married in prison? Yes. Well, huh. I think it's safe to assume that his wife knew all about his criminal record then. And what about identity theft? Did she know about that? Well, uh, I, I think she must have, yes. Why do you say that? Just the impression I got when I was with them. And were you often with them? No, well, sometimes. And when you were, how did she address her husband? As John or as Colin? Well, uh, as, uh, as, as Colin, uh, I think. Well, she must have, or else I would have... <laughs> you, you would have noticed. Well, I think. And how did you address her? Me? Address her. Well, as... Uh, as Mrs. Fishwick, yes. And she accepted this? It seemed to. So this was a double act. This was two people, both of them, pretending to be people that they weren't. I, I, I suppose so. Now, I, I want to be clear about this. You're telling us that there was never any doubt that the defendant was as much a part of this charade as her husband was, hmm? Yes. Right. Are you going to say sorry, then? Yeah, sorry. Good. We can take this, then. Well, baby, can't oh, I... Jason, don't start again. Thank you. And if he says it's out of focus, it's not. It's deliberate. It's called soft focus. Though he's probably never heard of it. Bye. Finally, Mr Packham, I don't suppose you happen to remember the uh, home address of Mr and Mrs State, do you? Who, of course, you knew as Mr and Mrs Fishback. Yes, I do. I've got rather a good memory for that sort of thing. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Number five, Coronation Street. And directly across from this address, could you tell us what we might find? What uh, sort of building? Oh, directly... Oh, a, a factory. A, a nick... <coughs> a, an underwear factory. And the distance from number five to this factory would be... What would you say? 30... 40 metres. 30 metres. From the state's front door to the factory where the body of Colin Fishwick was discovered. Milots! No, more questions, Milots. And we hope no more remarks like that one either. Miss Taban? No questions, my lord. So you were on the prosecution side? Fizz rescued you when we were all tied up in your cellar. I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to discuss the case until I've given my evidence. This is Dorothy Hoyle. Oh, yes, that's me. They want you in court. If you would follow me. Just answer the questions. Of course. 
Yes. I will. Go in and see what she says. In where? Public gallery. I will, but they won't let me. Oh, go on, Katie, please. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. <clears throat> Could you tell us your full name? Dorothy Alexandra Hoyle. And you're the mother of Charlotte Hoyle? I was when she was alive, yes. Of course. Could you tell us, please, about the first time you became aware that Charlotte was involved with John Stape? Well, she told us that she'd met someone and she wanted us to meet him. So we did. We were pleased. And this person was... John Stape, yes. And was he introduced to you under that name? No. Oh, no, he was Colin. He was always Colin. What did you and your husband think of him? We liked him. We thought, at last, she's met the right man. And had she? Definitely not. He was conning her like he was conning us. And in your opinion, why was he doing this? Well, I've got to think that it was because Charlotte knew what she knew and he had to keep her quiet. Which, of course, he did, eventually. By the only way he could. My lad, if the witness would just answer the questions. Mrs Hoyle, when did you first encounter Fiona State, the defendant? Well, I remember one day we were going to visit Charlotte. And as we got near, she came running out of Charlotte's front door. And then, when we got inside, the whole flat was ransacked. And did you discover why? Charlotte wouldn't tell us. But it was definitely her that had done it. And were there any subsequent occasions when you actually met the defendant? Well, one day, this was after Charlotte was no longer with us, we found Colin, as we thought of him, yes. stuffing money through our letterbox. I still don't know why. Well, anyway, he was in quite a state, so we ended up sending for his friend. This was... The defendant? She came to collect him. And how did she introduce herself? She said she was his friend. Not his wife? No. Definitely not. She was his friend. And she called him Colin. So we were being led right up the garden path, weren't we? Um. Oh. I uh, wasn't expecting to see you down here again today. Well, I've just been sat upstairs on my own and uh, I was wondering if you've heard anything. About what? The trial. Heard anything from Mary? Oh, no, no, no. I, I mean, I might get a bulletin about dinner time, but uh, I, I'm not expecting to hear anything before then. Mm. Do you know, I used to think I was a pretty good judge of people. Not anymore. I mean, that John Stape. Yeah. I would have said he was a nice young man, wouldn't yeah. you? Well, I suppose so, yeah. Shall I make us a coffee? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll have a coffee with you. Okay. So you and your husband were imprisoned by John Stape? We were, yes. In your own cellar, in your own home? Yes. How did you escape? Escape? Yes, escape. What happened? Well, he came to see us. John Stape? And while he was there, she turned up. And she challenged him as to what he was doing, and then she called the police, didn't she? Well, it was all very confusing. Mrs Hoyle, the defendant rescued you. Far from working with her husband, she was the one who alerted the police as to what was going on. Maybe that's what they wanted us to think. I don't know. No further questions, my lad. Mr. Bendeen? Yes. Could you come with me, please? Well, it's over now. Oh, thank goodness. I don't ever want to have to go through anything like that again. You won't even admit that Fizz rescued him. It's like she was trying to make out. It was all an act. Hey, you took an orphan there. Oh, dear. 
What now? Now look, we don't want an argument. We just Why want... didn't you just tell the truth? Alfie didn't know anything about what State was up to. I was testifying about our daughter. What had happened to her? Yes, but Fizz had nothing to do with that. You know she hadn't. You can say what you like, but that husband of hers could never have done what he did without her. Our daughter would be alive now if your precious sister hadn't kept her mouth shut and gone along with everything. Mr. Dean, you're a solicitor. Yes. Joy Fishwick was your client. Yes. You handled her will. Could you tell us about that, please? Well, it was very straightforward. She'd left everything to her son, Colin. So you set out to contact Colin? Yes. Did you succeed? Well, I thought I had. What happened? Well, I believed I'd arranged an appointment with Colin, but then the defendant arrived in his place, claiming to be his wife and telling me that Colin was in hospital. The defendant turned up at your office and told you that she was Colin Fishwick's wife? Yes. What did he do? Well, I believed her. I had no reason not to. So I arranged for the legacy to be paid over to her. She must have put on quite a performance, one which left no room for any doubt. She did. Why do you think she was able to do that? Well, she must have known that the real Colin Fishwick wasn't going to turn up and expose her as a fraud. Why wasn't he? Because she knew he was dead? Exactly! My lord! She knew I... Colin Fishwick wasn't going to turn up because three months earlier, her and her husband had murdered him. And we'll be back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>